Question 1. What are the core principles of food safety? A. Cooking, chilling, freezing, and serving. B. Cleaning, separation, cooking, and chilling. C. Purchasing, storing, disposing, and ignoring. D. Freezing, thawing, microwaving, and tasting. Answer B. Cleaning, separation, cooking, and chilling. These four principles are fundamental to preventing foodborne illness by reducing the risk of contamination and ensuring food is cooked and stored at safe temperatures. Question 2. How should hands be washed and for how long? A. Quickly rinse under cold water. B. With soap and water for at least 5 seconds. C. With soap and water for at least 20 seconds. D. With water only for 10 seconds. Answer. C. With soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Proper hand washing requires soap and water for at least 20 seconds to effectively remove germs and bacteria. Question 3. What is the temperature danger zone? A. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. B. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. 4. 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. C. 45 degree Fahrenheit to 155 degree Fahrenheit. 7. 2 degree Celsius to 68. 3 degree Celsius. D. 50 degree Fahrenheit to 165 degree Fahrenheit. 10 degree Celsius to 73. 9 degree Celsius. Answer. B. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. 4. 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. This range is where bacteria can grow most rapidly, and food should not be left in this zone for more than two hours. Question 4. Define cross-contamination and provide examples of how it occurs. A. The enhancement of flavors by mixing different food items. B. The transfer of bacteria from one food item to another. C. The process of cooling food rapidly in a freezer. D. The practice of using the same cutting board for vegetables and meat. Answer. B. The transfer of bacteria from one food item to another. An example includes using the same cutting board for raw chicken and then for chopping vegetables without proper cleaning in between. Question 5. What are time slash temperature control for safety? TCES foods. A. Foods that do not require time or temperature control. B. Non perishable food items. C. Foods that require time and temperature control to prevent bacterial growth. D. Frozen food items only. Answer C. Foods that require time and temperature control to prevent bacterial growth. Examples include dairy products, meat, poultry, fish, and cooked vegetables. Question 6. Explain the proper procedure for cooling TCS foods. A. Leave at room temperature until cool. B. Cool from 140 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit. 60 degree Celsius to 21 degree Celsius. Within 2 hours and then to 41 degree Fahrenheit. 5 degree Celsius or lower within the next 4 hours. C. Place directly in the freezer after cooking. D. Cool by placing food items in cold water baths for several days. Answer. B. Cool from 140 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit, 60 degree Celsius to 21 degree Celsius, within 2 hours and then to 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius, or lower within the next 4 hours. This two-stage cooling process ensures rapid and safe reduction of food temperature to prevent bacterial growth. Question 7. Identify signs and symptoms of foodborne illness. A. Increased energy and vitality. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. C. Hunger and thirst. D. Immediate allergic reactions only. Answer. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. These are common symptoms of foodborne illness caused by the ingestion of contaminated food. Question 8. What is the role of a food safety manager in a restaurant? A. To cook food to the correct temperatures. B. 
to oversee and manage all aspects of the restaurant's food safety practices. C. To serve food to customers. D. To manage financial accounts only. Answer. B. To oversee and manage all aspects of the restaurant's food safety practices. The food safety manager ensures compliance with food safety regulations and trains staff on proper food handling techniques. Question 9. How should raw meats be stored in a refrigerator in relation to other foods? A. Above ready-to-eat foods. B. Alongside vegetables for efficient space use. C. Below ready-to-eat foods. D. In the same container as cooked foods. Answer. C. Below ready-to-eat foods. Storing raw meats below ready-to-eat foods prevents juices from contaminating other items. Question 10. What are the minimum internal cooking temperatures for poultry, beef, pork, and seafood? A. 165 degree Fahrenheit for poultry, 160 degree Fahrenheit for beef and pork, 145 degree Fahrenheit for seafood. B. 145 degree Fahrenheit for poultry, 135 degree Fahrenheit for beef, 145 degree Fahrenheit for pork, 145 degree Fahrenheit for seafood. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit for poultry and ground meats, 145 degree Fahrenheit for beef and pork steaks, 145 degree Fahrenheit for seafood. D. 150 degree Fahrenheit for all mentioned foods. Answer. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit for poultry and ground meats, 145 degree Fahrenheit for beef and pork steaks, 145 degree Fahrenheit for seafood. These temperatures ensure harmful bacteria are killed. Question 11. Why is it important to use a food thermometer? A. To ensure food is cooked to a safe internal temperature. B. To measure the temperature of the refrigerator only. C. For enhancing the flavor of the food. D. To check the room temperature. Answer. A. To ensure food is cooked to a safe internal temperature. A food thermometer is the only reliable way to verify that food has reached a safe internal temperature. Question 12. Describe the process for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen equipment and surfaces. A. Wiping with a dry cloth. B. Rinsing with hot water only. C. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying a sanitizing solution. D using vinegar for all cleaning needs. Answer, C, cleaning with soap and water, then applying a sanitizing solution. This two-step process ensures surfaces and equipment are free from food particles and bacteria. Question 13, what are the major food allergens identified by regulatory agencies? A, salt, sugar, water, and flour. B, milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. C. Food coloring, preservatives, additives, and flavorings. D. All types of meat and poultry. Answer. B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. These are recognized as the major food allergens that must be identified on food labels. Question 14. How should a food recall be managed in a food service operation? A. Ignoring the recall and continuing to use the product. B. Removing the recalled product from inventory and following the manufacturer's instructions. C. Only recalling items if customers complain. D. Waiting for the product to be used up before replacing it. Answer. B. Removing the recalled product from inventory and following the manufacturer's instructions. This ensures the safety of customers by eliminating potentially harmful products. Question 15. Explain the purpose and components of a hazard analysis and critical control points, HACCP, plan. A. To enhance the flavor of food with no focus on safety. B. A system that identifies, evaluates, and controls hazards, which are significant for food safety. C. To monitor cooking temperatures only, D. A financial plan for managing restaurant profits. Answer. B. 
a system that identifies, evaluates, and controls hazards, which are significant for food safety. HACCP is a preventive approach to food safety that addresses physical, chemical, and biological hazards. Question 16. Describe the correct procedure for receiving food deliveries to ensure food safety. A. Accepting all deliveries without inspection. B. Inspecting for proper temperature, packaging integrity, and expiration dates. C. Storing deliveries immediately without checking. D. Only checking the appearance of the food. Answer. B. Inspecting for proper temperature, packaging integrity, and expiration dates. This ensures that only safe and high-quality foods enter the kitchen. Question 17. How should gloves be used properly in food service? A. Reused for different tasks to save on costs. B. Used as a substitute for hand washing. C. Changed between tasks and when torn or soiled. D. Worn only when handling raw meat. Answer. C. Changed between tasks and when torn or soiled. Proper glove use prevents cross-contamination between different food items and surfaces. Question 18. What measures can be taken to prevent pest infestations in a food service environment? A. Keeping doors and windows open at all times. B. Regular cleaning, sealing entry points, and proper waste management. C. Using only organic pest control methods. D. Ignoring small pests as they do not pose a significant risk. Answer. B. Regular cleaning, sealing entry points, and proper waste management. These practices help eliminate food sources and entry points for pests, reducing the risk of infestation. Question 19. Explain how to properly thaw frozen food. A. On the counter at room temperature. B. Under running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. C. In a warm oven. D. By leaving it outside in the sun. Answer. B. Under running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. These methods safely thaw food without allowing it to enter the temperature danger zone. Question 20. What are the guidelines for serving food safely to vulnerable populations? A. Serving food as quickly as possible without temperature checks. B. Using higher cooking temperatures and avoiding high-risk foods. C. Offering only raw foods to maintain nutrients. D. Special guidelines are not necessary for vulnerable populations. Answer. B. Using higher cooking temperatures and avoiding high-risk foods. Vulnerable populations, such as the elderly, young children, and immunocompromised individuals, require stricter food safety practices to prevent illness. Question 21. How can foodborne illnesses be prevented during food preparation? A. By increasing the spice levels in food. B. Ignoring expiration dates on ingredients. C. Practicing proper hand washing, avoiding cross-contamination, and cooking to the right temperatures. D. Cooking food at low temperatures for longer periods. Answer. C. Practicing proper hand washing, avoiding cross-contamination, and cooking to the right temperatures. These practices are fundamental in preventing foodborne illnesses by controlling the risk factors associated with food contamination and undercooking. Question 22. Describe the steps involved in conducting a food safety audit. A. Checking the ambience and decor of the restaurant only. B. Reviewing food safety practices, records, and compliance with regulations. C. Tasting food samples to check for freshness. D. Focusing solely on financial records related to food costs. Answer. B. Reviewing food safety practices, records, and compliance with regulations. A food safety audit involves a comprehensive evaluation of a food service operation's adherence to established food safety standards and regulations. Question 23. What is the importance of maintaining personal hygiene in the kitchen? A. It only affects the morale of the kitchen staff. B. To prevent the transfer of pathogens from individuals to food. C. Personal hygiene has no impact on food safety. D. It's important for aesthetic reasons only. Answer. B. To prevent the transfer of pathogens from individuals to food. 
Good personal hygiene practices among kitchen staff are crucial to preventing foodborne illnesses. Question 24. How should cutting boards be cleaned and maintained to prevent cross-contamination? A. By using the same board for meat and vegetables to save time. B. Washing with cold water only after each use. C. Using separate boards for raw meats and vegetables and sanitizing after each use. D. Cleaning once at the end of the day is sufficient. Answer. C. Using separate boards for raw meats and vegetables and sanitizing after each use. This practice helps prevent the transfer of harmful bacteria from raw meats to foods that will not be cooked. Question 25. Explain the procedures for safely handling and preparing produce. A. Washing thoroughly in soapy water. B. Rinsing under running water and using a produce brush when necessary. C. Spraying with a chemical sanitizer before use. D. Soaking in hot water to kill pathogens. Answer. B. Rinsing under running water and using a produce brush when necessary. Properly cleaning produce reduces the risk of foodborne illness by removing dirt and potential pathogens. Question 26. What are the best practices for waste management in a food service operation? A. Combining all waste types to save space. B. Regularly removing waste and cleaning containers to prevent odors and pests. C. Storing waste in food preparation areas for convenience. D. Only disposing of waste at the end of each week. Answer. B. Regularly removing waste and cleaning containers to prevent odors and pests. Effective waste management practices help maintain a clean and safe kitchen environment. Question 27. Describe the process for calibrating a thermometer. A. Adjusting it based on the day's weather forecast. B. Using boiling water or ice water to adjust the thermometer to known temperatures. C. Guessing the correct temperature and setting the thermometer accordingly. D. Thermometers do not require calibration. Answer. B. Using boiling water or ice water to adjust the thermometer to known temperatures. This ensures that the thermometer provides accurate readings for safe food preparation. Question 28. How should a food service operation respond to a water supply contamination alert? A. Continue using water as usual until symptoms of illness appear. B. Boil water before use or use bottled water for drinking and food preparation. C. Use more chemical sanitizers to compensate. D. Only serve dry foods that do not require water for preparation. Answer. B. Boil water before use or use bottled water for drinking and food preparation. This precaution helps protect against consuming or using contaminated water in food preparation. Question 29. What are the guidelines for the safe use of chemicals in the kitchen? A. Store chemicals above food items to save space. B. Use any household cleaner for all purposes. C. Label and store chemicals away from food and use according to instructions. D. Dilute chemicals with water to make them safer. Answer. C. Label and store chemicals away from food and use according to instructions. Proper chemical storage and use prevent accidental food contamination. Question 30. How can food service operations ensure the safety of buffet and self-service areas? A. By allowing customers to use their hands for convenience. B. Using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils. C. Offering only non-perishable food items. D. Limiting the buffet to raw foods only. Answer. B. Using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils. These measures help maintain food safety by protecting food from contamination and temperature abuse. Question 31. Explain the significance of food traceability in food safety. A. It's primarily for tracking the popularity of dishes. B. Allows for the tracking of food through all stages of production, processing, and distribution. C. Traceability is only important for imported foods. D. It refers to tracing the origin of kitchen equipment. Answer. B. 
allows for the tracking of food through all stages of production, processing, and distribution. Food traceability is crucial for identifying and addressing sources of contamination in the food supply chain. Question 32. What are the legal requirements for food safety training and certification? A. Optional for all food service employees. B. Required only for managers and chefs. C. Mandatory for anyone handling food, varying by jurisdiction. D. There are no legal requirements for food safety training. Answer. C. Mandatory for anyone handling food, varying by jurisdiction. Food safety training and certification laws vary, but generally, anyone involved in food handling must receive proper training to ensure food safety. Question 33. How should food temperatures be monitored during storage and preparation? A. By estimating based on the ambient room temperature. B. Using approved and calibrated thermometers to check regularly. C. Only checking at the beginning and end of the day. D. Food temperatures do not need to be monitored. Answer. B. Using approved and calibrated thermometers to check regularly. Regular temperature monitoring with reliable thermometers is essential to maintaining food safety. Question 34. Describe the importance of food safety culture within a food service operation. A. It is less important than customer service. B. A strong food safety culture ensures that all staff prioritize and practice food safety, reducing the risk of foodborne illness. C. Food safety culture only applies to high-end restaurants. D. It is primarily about maintaining a clean appearance. Answer. B. A strong food safety culture ensures that all staff prioritize and practice food safety, reducing the risk of foodborne illness. Cultivating a culture that values food safety can significantly impact the overall health and safety of customers. Question 35. How can cross-contact with allergens be minimized in the kitchen? A. By cooking all foods at high temperatures. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergenic and non-allergenic foods. C. Ignoring minor allergens as they pose little risk. D. Allowing natural cross-contact to build immunity in customers. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergenic and non-allergenic foods. This practice helps prevent the unintentional transfer of allergens to foods meant to be allergen-free. Question 36. What are the guidelines for manual dishwashing in a three-compartment sink? A. Rinse, wash in hot water, then air dry. B. Wash, rinse, and then sanitize. C. Soak, bleach, then rinse with cold water. D. Only the first compartment is needed for effective cleaning. Answer. B. Wash, rinse, and then sanitize. This three-step process ensures dishes are cleaned, rinsed of soap and debris, and then sanitized to eliminate pathogens. Question 37. Explain the role of food packaging in maintaining food safety. A. Packaging is only for aesthetic purposes. B. To protect food from contamination and tampering, and to provide information on handling and expiration. C. Food packaging increases the risk of contamination. D. It's used to extend the cooking time of food. Answer. B. To protect food from contamination and tampering, and to provide information on handling and expiration. Proper packaging is crucial for safeguarding food from external contaminants and providing critical safety information. Question 38. How should a food service worker handle a cut or wound on their hand? A. Continue working as normal to build immunity. B. Cover with a bandage only. C. Cover the wound with a waterproof bandage and wear gloves. D. Leave the wound open to air out and heal faster. Answer. C. Cover the wound with a waterproof bandage and wear gloves. This prevents bacteria from the wound contaminating the food and protects the wound from infection. Question 39. What is the process for safely incorporating wild game into the menu? A. Treat it the same as any store-bought meat. B. Ensure it is properly inspected, handled, and cooked to safe temperatures. C. 
Serve wild game raw to preserve its natural flavors. D. Wild game should not be used in commercial kitchens. Answer. B. Ensure is properly inspected, handled, and cooked to safe temperatures. Proper handling and cooking of wild game are essential to ensure it is safe to eat. Question 40. Describe the considerations for using disposable items in food service. A. Use disposable items to save on washing costs, regardless of waste. B. Choose biodegradable or recyclable options, when possible to reduce environmental impact. C. Disposable items are discouraged in all food service settings. D. Reusing disposable items to reduce costs. Answer. B. Choose biodegradable or recyclable options, when possible to reduce environmental impact. Opting for environmentally friendly disposable items can help minimize the ecological footprint of a food service operation. Question 41. How should a food service operation manage employee health and hygiene? A. By allowing sick employees to work as long as they wear masks. B. Implementing policies that require employees to report illness and exclude them from work if they are symptomatic. C. Ignoring minor symptoms like a cold to avoid staffing shortages. D. Encouraging the use of hand sanitizer instead of hand washing. Answer. B. Implementing policies that require employees to report illness and exclude them from work if they are symptomatic. This ensures that illnesses, especially those that can be transmitted through food, do not spread to customers or other staff members. Question 42. Explain the procedures for safe ice handling. A. Ice should be handled with bare hands for efficiency. B. Using clean and sanitized ice scoops and never using glassware to scoop ice. C. Storing ice next to raw meats for space saving. D. Allowing customers to scoop their own ice to reduce labor. Answer. B. Using clean and sanitized ice scoops and never using glassware to scoop ice. This prevents contamination of the ice, which is considered a food item. Question 43. What are the implications of using non-thermal food processing techniques on food safety? A. They completely eliminate the need for refrigeration. B. These techniques, like high-pressure processing, can reduce pathogens while preserving food quality. C. Non-thermal techniques are only suitable for beverage processing. D. They increase the risk of foodborne illnesses. Answer B. These techniques, like high pressure processing, can reduce pathogens while preserving food quality. Non thermal processing methods can offer an alternative to traditional heat methods, potentially maintaining more of the food's original texture, nutrients, and flavors while ensuring safety. Question 44 Describe the measures for controlling the spread of antibiotic resistant bacteria through food. A. Increasing the use of antibiotics in livestock and poultry. B. Ensuring proper cooking temperatures and supporting responsible antibiotic use in agriculture. C. Ignoring the issue as it does not directly affect food safety. D. Using only raw and unprocessed foods. Answer. B. Ensuring proper cooking temperatures and supporting responsible antibiotic use in agriculture. Responsible use of antibiotics in food production and adherence to safe cooking practices are essential strategies to combat the spread of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Question 45. How should a food service operation ensure the effectiveness of a food recall? A. By continuing to use recalled products until symptoms occur. B. Maintaining up-to-date contact information for suppliers and promptly removing and disposing of recalled products. C. Waiting for official notices before taking any action. D. Only recalling items that are visibly contaminated. Answer. B. Maintaining up-to-date contact information for suppliers and promptly removing and disposing of recalled products. Quick and efficient response to recalls helps protect customers from potentially harmful foods. Question 46. What factors influence the survival and growth of pathogens in food? A. The color and texture of the food. B. Temperature, time, moisture, and pH levels. C. 
the price and popularity of the food item. D, the packaging design of the food product. Answer, B, temperature, time, moisture, and pH levels. These are critical factors that affect the ability of pathogens to survive and multiply in food, potentially leading to foodborne illness. Question 47, to discuss the strategies for ensuring food safety in mobile food units. A. Ignoring standard food safety practices due to space constraints. B. Adhering to the same food safety regulations as stationary restaurants, including temperature control and proper sanitation. C. Using only pre-packaged and canned foods. D. Limiting menu items to cold foods only. Answer. B. Adhering to the same food safety regulations as stationary restaurants, including temperature control and proper sanitation. Mobile food units must follow strict food safety practices to ensure the health and safety of their customers. Question 48. Explain the importance of supplier selection in ensuring food safety. A. Choosing suppliers based solely on cost without considering safety standards. B. Selecting reputable suppliers who adhere to food safety regulations and standards. C. Using multiple suppliers to increase food diversity, regardless of their safety records. D. Prioritizing suppliers who offer the fastest delivery times. Answer. B. Selecting reputable suppliers who adhere to food safety regulations and standards. Working with trusted suppliers ensures that the ingredients used are safe and of high quality. Question 49. How can technology be utilized to enhance food safety practices? A. By replacing all manual food safety checks with automated systems. B. Using digital tools for temperature monitoring, training, and tracking the cleanliness of surfaces. C. Limiting technology use to social media marketing only. D. Avoiding technology as it complicates food safety procedures. Answer. B. Using digital tools for temperature monitoring, training, and tracking the cleanliness of surfaces, technology can improve the accuracy and efficiency of food safety practices, making it easier to maintain high standards. Question 50. Describe the procedures for handling chemical spills in a food service environment. A. Ignoring the spill to avoid interrupting service. B. Immediately cleaning up the spill using appropriate personal protective equipment and notifying management. C. Covering the spill with tablecloths until the end of the shift. D. Encouraging customers to help with the cleanup for a discount. Answer. B. Immediately cleaning up the spill using appropriate personal protective equipment and notifying management. Quick and safe response to chemical spills helps prevent accidents and contamination. Question 51. What are the best practices for inventory management to ensure food safety? A. Ordering large quantities of perishables to reduce delivery frequency. B. Using the first in, first out, FIFO method to ensure older stock is used first. C. Storing all foods at room temperature to simplify inventory tracking. D. Mixing old and new stock to save space. Answer. B. Using the first in, first out, FIFO method to ensure older stock is used first. This practice helps prevent food spoilage and waste by ensuring that the oldest products are used before they expire. Question 52. How should a food service operation manage and document food safety training? A. By providing training once and assuming knowledge retention. B. Maintaining records of all training sessions and ensuring ongoing education for all staff. C. Delegating training responsibilities to new employees. D. Considering training an optional activity based on staff interest. Answer. B. Maintaining records of all training sessions and ensuring ongoing education for all staff. Documenting training helps ensure that all team members are consistently informed about safe food handling practices. Question 53. Explain the significance of maintaining proper food temperatures during service. A. It primarily affects the taste of the food. B. Proper temperatures prevent the growth of pathogens and keep food safe to eat. C. Temperature control is only important for cold dishes. D. 
Serving temperatures are based on customer preference only. Answer. B. Proper temperatures prevent the growth of pathogens and keep food safe to eat. Maintaining correct hot and cold holding temperatures is crucial for food safety. Question 54. What are the guidelines for the safe production of plant-based meat alternatives? A. Treating them as inherently safe and requiring no temperature control. B. Following similar food safety practices as for animal-based meats, including preventing cross-contamination. C. Only using organic plants to ensure safety. D. Cooking at lower temperatures due to the absence of animal proteins. Answer. B. Following similar food safety practices as for animal-based meats, including preventing cross-contamination. Plant-based meat alternatives still require careful handling to ensure they are safe for consumption. Question 55. How should a food service operation manage the risks associated with cooking with cannabis? A. By adding cannabis to all dishes to enhance flavors. B. Understanding legal regulations, dosage, and ensuring clear labeling to inform customers. C. Avoiding the use of cannabis due to its complexity. D. Cooking cannabis at high temperatures to remove all psychoactive effects. Answer. B. Understanding legal regulations, dosage, and ensuring clear labeling to inform customers. Proper management includes being aware of legalities, controlling dosages, and communicating with customers about the presence of cannabis in food. Question 56. Describe the impact of precision agriculture on food safety. A. It has no impact on food safety, but focuses on increasing crop yields. B. Precision agriculture can lead to the overuse of pesticides, reducing food safety. C. By optimizing the use of water, nutrients, and pesticides, it can lead to safer food products. D. Precision agriculture techniques are too advanced and not applicable to food safety. Answer. C. By optimizing the use of water, nutrients, and pesticides, it can lead to safer food products. This approach can enhance food safety by reducing the chances of contamination from the source. Question 57. What are the food safety considerations for the use of 3D food printing? A. Ensuring that food-grade materials are used and the equipment is properly sanitized. B. 3D food printing is considered safe with no need for specific food safety considerations. C. The technology is only for non-edible decorations, so food safety is not a concern. D. Food safety is compromised as 3D printers cannot reach the necessary temperatures. Answer. A. Ensuring that food-grade materials are used and the equipment is properly sanitized. As with any food preparation method, it's vital to ensure that the materials and equipment used in 3D food printing do not introduce contaminants. Question 58. How can a food service operation manage food safety during large-scale events? A. By lowering food safety standards due to the volume of food being served. B. Applying the same rigorous food safety standards as in everyday operations, despite the scale of the event. C. Serving only pre-packaged foods to avoid contamination. D. Focusing solely on the speed of service, not on food safety. Answer. B. Applying the same rigorous food safety standards as in everyday operations, despite the scale of the event. Large-scale events require careful planning and adherence to food safety protocols to ensure guest safety. Question 59. Discuss the role of blockchain technology in enhancing food traceability and safety. A. Blockchain is only relevant for financial transactions and has no place in food safety. B. It offers a secure and transparent way to track food products through the supply chain, improving response to food safety incidents. C. Blockchain technology complicates food traceability rather than improving it. D. The use of blockchain in food safety is limited to creating digital menus. Answer. B. It offers a secure and transparent way to track food products through the supply chain, improving response to food safety incidents. Blockchain can significantly enhance the traceability of food products, contributing to safer food systems. 
Question 60. What are the guidelines for conducting food safety risk assessments within a food service operation? A. Risk assessments are unnecessary if the operation has never experienced a foodborne illness outbreak. B. Identifying potential hazards, evaluating the risks associated with these hazards, and implementing measures to control them. C. Focusing exclusively on external risks, such as supplier issues, while ignoring internal kitchen practices. D. Conducting assessments only after an incident has occurred. Answer B. Identifying potential hazards, evaluating the risks associated with these hazards, and implementing measures to control them. A proactive approach to risk assessment helps prevent foodborne illnesses by addressing potential issues before they lead to problems. Question 61. How should allergen cross-contact be managed in a shared-use commercial kitchen? A. By cooking allergenic foods at higher temperatures. B. Using separate equipment and preparation areas for allergenic ingredients. C. Allowing minimal cross-contact as it is generally considered safe. D. Using color-coded utensils only without other cross-contact prevention measures. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and preparation areas for allergenic ingredients. This practice minimizes the risk of allergen cross-contact, ensuring the safety of customers with food allergies. Question 62. Describe the process for verifying the concentration of chlorine-based sanitizer solutions. A. Estimation based on the color of the solution. B. Using test strips to ensure it meets the required concentration for effective sanitization. C. Tasting the sanitizer solution to determine its strength. D. Assuming all purchased sanitizers are at the correct concentration. Answer. B. Using test strips to ensure it meets the required concentration for effective sanitization. Test strips provide a simple and accurate method to verify sanitizer concentrations, ensuring they are effective without being overly corrosive or leaving harmful residues. Question 63. What are the food safety challenges associated with sous vide cooking, and how can they be mitigated? A. Sous vide cooking poses no food safety challenges. B. Maintaining precise temperature control to prevent bacterial growth, using vacuum-sealed bags to minimize contamination. C. The main challenge is the texture of sous vide foods, which has no mitigation strategies. D. Sous vide enhances food safety by itself, requiring no additional precautions. Answer. B. Maintaining precise temperature control to prevent bacterial growth, using vacuum-sealed bags to minimize contamination. Precise temperature control and proper packaging are key to mitigating the risks associated with sous vide cooking, ensuring foods reach and maintain safe temperatures. Question 64. How does the Integrated Pest Management IPM, approach differ from traditional pest control? A. IPM focuses solely on the use of pesticides. B. IPM uses a combination of methods including prevention, monitoring, and control, reducing the reliance on chemical treatments. C. Traditional pest control methods involve introducing natural predators, while IPM does not. D. IPM is a newer technique that has yet to be proven effective. Answer. B. IPM uses a combination of methods including prevention, monitoring, and control, reducing the reliance on chemical treatments. This holistic approach aims to minimize pest activity and impact on the environment. Question 65. Explain the term secondary contamination and how it can occur in food service. A. It refers to the contamination of food by primary food handlers. B. Occurs when already contaminated food contaminates another food or surface. C. A theoretical concept with no real-world application. D. The deliberate contamination of food as a form of sabotage. Answer. B. Occurs when already contaminated food contaminates another food or surface. Secondary contamination highlights the importance of preventing the spread of contaminants from one source to another within the kitchen. Question 66. What measures should be taken to prevent listeria contamination in ready-to-eat foods? A. 
regularly consume ready-to-eat foods to build immunity. B. Maintain strict sanitation practices and store foods at safe temperatures. C. Listeria contamination is not preventable, so no measures are necessary. D. Focus solely on the taste and presentation of ready-to-eat foods. Answer. B. Maintain strict sanitation practices and store foods at safe temperatures. Proper sanitation and temperature control are critical in preventing the growth of listeria in ready-to-eat foods. Question 67. Discuss the importance of hand hygiene in preventing the spread of hepatitis A in food service. A. Hand hygiene is irrelevant for hepatitis A prevention. B. Frequent and proper hand washing can significantly reduce the risk of spreading hepatitis A. C. Only glove use, not hand washing, can prevent hepatitis A. D. Hepatitis A is not transmitted via food, making hand hygiene unnecessary. Answer. B. Frequent and proper hand washing can significantly reduce the risk of spreading hepatitis A. Good hand hygiene practices are essential in preventing foodborne transmission of hepatitis A virus. Question 68. What are the best practices for managing food safety risks associated with raw milk cheese? A. Raw milk cheese should be avoided entirely. B. Aging cheese for the minimum time required to reduce pathogens and ensuring cleanliness in the production process. C. No special practices are needed beyond those for pasteurized milk cheese. D. Soaking cheese in water to remove pathogens. Answer. B. Aging cheese for the minimum time required to reduce pathogens and ensuring cleanliness in the production process. Proper aging and sanitary conditions are crucial for minimizing food safety risks in raw milk cheese. Question 69. How do high pressure processing? HPP. Techniques enhance food safety. A. By cooking foods at extremely high temperatures. B. HPP uses cold pasteurization technique to inactivate pathogens without altering the food's texture or nutritional value. C. HPP is mainly used to improve the taste rather than safety. D. By applying minimal pressure to preserve the food's raw state. Answer. B. HPP uses cold pasteurization technique to inactivate pathogens without altering the food's texture or nutritional value. This method effectively increases food safety while maintaining quality. Question 70. Describe the challenges and solutions for maintaining food safety in mobile food units. A. The main challenge is the limited menu options solved by outsourcing food preparation. B. Challenges include limited space for equipment and storage. Solutions involve meticulous planning and adherence to food safety practices. C. Mobile units face no unique food safety challenges. D. Using only pre-packaged foods to avoid food safety issues. Answer. B. Challenges include limited space for equipment and storage. Solutions involve meticulous planning and adherence to food safety practices. Efficient use of space and strict food safety protocols are key to operating safely in mobile food units. Question 71. How should allergen cross-contact be managed in a shared-use commercial kitchen? A. By ensuring all foods contain common allergens to simplify menu planning. B. Implementing strict separation policies, dedicated equipment, and thorough cleaning procedures. C. Ignoring allergen management as it's the responsibility of the customer. D. Labeling foods with potential allergens after cross-contact occurs. Answer. B. Implementing strict separation policies, dedicated equipment, and thorough cleaning procedures. These measures are essential to prevent cross-contact and protect customers with food allergies. Question 72. What are the critical limits for sous vide cooking to ensure pathogen destruction? A. Cooking at any temperature as long as the food tastes good. B. Following specific time temperature combinations based on the type of food to ensure pathogens are destroyed. C. Setting the sous vide cooker to the highest possible temperature. D. Sous vide cooking is safe without any temperature control. Answer. B. 
following specific time temperature combinations based on the type of food to ensure pathogens are destroyed. Precise control over cooking temperature and duration is critical for the safety of sous vide foods. Question 73. Explain the concept of farm to fork traceability and its importance in food safety. A. It refers to the marketing strategy of promoting local farms only. B. Tracking the food's journey from production to the consumer to enhance food safety and quality. C. A focus on vegetarian and vegan diets, excluding meat products. D. Limiting food distribution to within a small geographic area. Answer. B. Tracking the food's journey from production to the consumer to enhance food safety and quality. Farm-to-fork traceability is crucial for identifying and managing food safety risks throughout the supply chain. Question 74. Discuss the role of active managerial control in a food safety management system. A. It involves delegating all food safety responsibilities to frontline employees. B. The proactive approach by management to identify and control food safety hazards. C. A passive system where managers react to issues as they arise. D. Focusing solely on customer service aspects, ignoring food safety. Answer. B. The proactive approach by management to identify and control food safety hazards. Active managerial control is key to a successful food safety management system, ensuring potential hazards are identified and mitigated before they become a problem. Question 75. What are the guidelines for the safe fermentation of vegetables in a commercial setting? A. Fermentation is unsafe and should not be done commercially. B. Maintaining specific temperature and pH levels to ensure the growth of beneficial microbes while inhibiting harmful ones. C. Adding preservatives to vegetables before fermenting to ensure safety. D. Letting vegetables ferment at room temperature for several weeks without monitoring. Answer. B. Maintaining specific temperature and pH levels to ensure the growth of beneficial microbes while inhibiting harmful ones. Controlled fermentation conditions are vital for producing safe fermented vegetable products. Question 76. How does the concentration of sanitizing solutions impact their effectiveness? A. Concentration is irrelevant. All sanitizers work the same. B. Too low concentration may not effectively kill pathogens, while too high can be toxic and leave harmful residues. C. Higher concentrations always result in better sanitization. D. Sanitizers should be diluted as much as possible to extend their use. Answer. B. Too low concentration may not effectively kill pathogens, while too high can be toxic and leave harmful residues. Correct sanitizer concentration is critical for balancing safety and efficacy. Question 77. Describe the regulatory requirements for labeling allergens on packaged foods. A. Allergens need only be labeled if they are the main ingredient. B. Manufacturers must clearly identify the presence of major allergens in the ingredient list or with a separate allergen statement. C. Labeling allergens is optional and left to the discretion of the manufacturer. D. Only synthetic allergens must be labeled, not natural ones. Answer. B. Manufacturers must clearly identify the presence of major allergens in the ingredient list or with a separate allergen statement. This requirement helps consumers with allergies make safe food choices. Question 78. What are the food safety considerations for serving food to immunocompromised individuals? A. Serving only raw foods to preserve nutrients. B. Extra precautions including using pasteurized ingredients and avoiding raw or undercooked foods. C. No special considerations are necessary. D. Focusing on taste rather than safety. Answer. B. Extra precautions including using pasteurized ingredients and avoiding raw or undercooked foods. Immunocompromised individuals are at higher risk for foodborne illnesses, necessitating stricter food safety practices. Question 79. How can a food service operation ensure the effectiveness of a food recall? A. By ignoring recalls for non-critical items. B. 
regularly training staff on recall procedures and maintaining accurate inventory records for quick response. C. Assuming suppliers will handle all aspects of a recall. D. Waiting for customer complaints before taking action. Answer. B. Regularly training staff on recall procedures and maintaining accurate inventory records for quick response. Effective recall procedures protect customers by swiftly removing potentially unsafe food from the supply chain. Question 80. What factors contribute to the virulence of E. coli O157? 7 in ground beef. A. The method of packaging and branding. B. Its ability to survive under acidic conditions and low cooking temperatures. C. The color of the beef. T. The use of organic versus conventional beef. Answer. B. Its ability to survive under acidic conditions and low cooking temperatures. E. coli O157. Seven's resilience in various environments makes it a particularly dangerous pathogen in ground beef. Question 81. Discuss the strategies for reducing acrylamide formation in fried foods. A. Pre-soaking potatoes in water before frying. B. Frying at the highest possible temperature. C. Adding more oil to the food before frying. D. Avoiding seasoning foods before frying. Answer. A. Pre-soaking potatoes in water before frying. This strategy helps reduce acrylamide, a potentially harmful chemical that can form in starchy foods when cooked at high temperatures. Question 82. How does the temperature of the receiving environment affect the survival of pathogens on food surfaces? A. Pathogens are unaffected by environmental temperatures. B. Cooler temperatures promote the survival of all pathogens. C. Warmer temperatures may reduce pathogen survival, but proper refrigeration is essential for inhibiting growth. D. The temperature has no impact as long as the food looks safe. Answer. C. Warmer temperatures may reduce pathogen survival, but proper refrigeration is essential for inhibiting growth. Controlling the temperature of the storage environment is crucial for food safety. Question 83. What is the significance of the virulence factors of Salmonella typhi? A. They make it suitable for use in cooking. B. Virulence factors contribute to its ability to cause severe illness, highlighting the need for proper food handling. C. They are beneficial for food preservation. D. Virulence factors are only present in Salmonella typhi used in laboratories. Answer. B. Virulence factors contribute to its ability to cause severe illness, highlighting the need for proper food handling. Understanding the pathogenicity of bacteria, like Salmonella typhi, underscores the importance of food safety practices. Question 84. How should a food service operation respond to a boil water advisory? A. Continue using tap water as boiling is considered unnecessary. B. Use boiled or bottled water for all culinary, drinking, and washing purposes. C. Only use boiled water for drinking, not for food preparation. D. Ignore the advisory if the water appears clear. Answer. B. Use boiled or bottled water for all culinary, drinking, and washing purposes. This ensures that all water used is free from potential contaminants during the advisory period. Question 85. Describe the methods for controlling the growth of mold in food products. A. Keeping food products in warm, moist environments. B. Using proper packaging and storage conditions to limit moisture and oxygen exposure. C. Encouraging mold growth to enhance flavor. D. Mold growth cannot be controlled. Answer. B. Using proper packaging and storage conditions to limit moisture and oxygen exposure. Controlling environmental factors like moisture and oxygen can significantly reduce mold growth on food products. Question 86. What are the guidelines for using copper utensils in food preparation? A. Copper utensils should be used exclusively for acidic foods. B. They are preferred for high temperature cooking. C. Avoid using with acidic foods to prevent copper leaching into the food. D. Copper utensils are banned in food service. Answer. C. 
Avoid using with acidic foods to prevent copper leaching into the food. Copper can react with acidic foods, leading to contamination that may pose health risks. Question 87. How can the risk of histamine poisoning from fish be minimized? A. By allowing fish to age for several days before consumption. B. Maintaining cold chain management from catch to consumption. C. Cooking fish at low temperatures for extended periods. D. Histamine risk in fish cannot be minimized. Answer. B. Maintaining cold chain management from catch to consumption. Proper temperature control inhibits the bacterial activity that can lead to histamine production in fish. Question 88. Discuss the impact of food additives on food safety and shelf life. A. Food additives decrease shelf life and safety. B. Properly used additives can enhance food safety and extend shelf life by inhibiting pathogen growth and spoilage. C. Additives are only used for coloring and have no impact on safety or shelf life. D. All food additives are harmful and should be avoided. Answer. B. Properly used additives can enhance food safety and extend shelf life by inhibiting pathogen growth and spoilage. They play a critical role in maintaining food quality and safety. Question 89. What is the relationship between food texture and microbial growth? A. Texture has no influence on microbial growth. B. Softer foods are less susceptible to microbial growth. C. Certain textures can trap moisture and nutrients, providing an environment conducive to microbial growth. D. Only dry, hard textures support microbial growth. Answer. C. Certain textures can trap moisture and nutrients, providing an environment conducive to microbial growth. Understanding this relationship helps in designing safer food products and storage conditions. Question 90. How does aerobic packaging influence the shelf life of fresh meat? A. It significantly reduces the shelf life due to increased oxygen. B. Aerobic packaging extends shelf life by allowing oxygen to circulate, which slows down microbial growth. C. The type of packaging has no impact on meat shelf life. D. It completely stops all microbial growth. Answer. B. Aerobic packaging extends shelf life by allowing oxygen to circulate, which slows down microbial growth. This type of packaging can help maintain the quality and safety of fresh meat. Question 91. What are the challenges of implementing a food safety culture in a large food service operation? A. The large size makes it impossible to implement any food safety practices. B. Consistently engaging and training a diverse workforce and ensuring compliance across all levels. C. Food safety culture is only necessary in small operations. D. There are no challenges. Food safety culture is easily achieved. Answer. B. Consistently engaging and training a diverse workforce and ensuring compliance across all levels. The key challenge is ensuring that food safety becomes an integral part of the operation's ethos, regardless of its size. Question 92. How should a restaurant manage the risk of cross-contact for gluten-free menu items? A. By serving only gluten-free items to all customers. B. Using separate preparation areas, utensils, and equipment for gluten-free foods. C. Assuming a small amount of gluten is acceptable in gluten-free dishes. D. Labeling dishes as gluten-free without any additional precautions. Answer. B. Using separate preparation areas, utensils, and equipment for gluten-free foods. These measures help protect customers with celiac disease or gluten sensitivity from exposure to gluten. Question 93. Discuss the role of environmental monitoring in a food safety management system. A. It is unnecessary if cleaning schedules are maintained. B. Regularly testing surfaces for pathogens to identify potential risks and verify cleaning effectiveness. C. Only monitoring the outdoor environment for potential hazards. D. Environmental monitoring is only for water quality testing. Answer. B. 
regularly testing surfaces for pathogens to identify potential risks and verify cleaning effectiveness. Environmental monitoring is a proactive approach to identify and mitigate potential contamination sources. Question 94. What are the considerations for the safe use of edible flowers in food service? A. Using only flowers from reputable suppliers, ensuring they are edible and free from pesticides. B. All flowers are safe to use as long as they are washed. C. Edible flowers should be avoided due to high toxicity. D. Treating edible flowers with heat to eliminate toxins. Answer. A. Using only flowers from reputable suppliers, ensuring they are edible and free from pesticides. Proper sourcing and handling are crucial for safely incorporating edible flowers into dishes. Question 95. Describe the process for handling customer complaints related to foodborne illness. A. Ignoring complaints to avoid liability. B. Taking detailed information, reporting to health authorities if necessary, and investigating the complaint to prevent future incidents. C. Telling customers they are mistaken and no illness could have originated from the establishment. D. Offering free meals as the only response to complaints. Answer. B. Taking detailed information, reporting to health authorities if necessary, and investigating the complaint to prevent future incidents. A thorough and responsible approach to complaints helps address potential food safety issues and maintain customer trust. Question 96. How can the spread of Norwalk virus be prevented in a catering setting? A. By ensuring all food is served raw. B. Frequent hand washing, especially after using the restroom and excluding sick employees from work. C. The Norwalk virus cannot be prevented, so no specific actions are needed. D. Using only bottled water for cooking and drinking. Answer. B. Frequent hand washing especially after using the restroom and excluding sick employees from work. Good hygiene practices are essential in preventing the spread of Norwalk virus, particularly in settings where food is prepared and served to large groups. Question 97. What are the implications of using non-thermal food processing techniques on food safety? A. They automatically make food safer without any additional safety measures needed. B. Non-thermal techniques, such as high-pressure processing, can inactivate pathogens while preserving food quality, but must be properly validated. C. These techniques are too experimental to be considered for food safety. D. They increase the risk of foodborne illness by not using heat. Answer. B. Non-thermal techniques, such as high-pressure processing, can inactivate pathogens while preserving food quality, but must be properly validated. Such methods offer innovative ways to ensure food safety without compromising nutritional or sensory qualities. Question 98. Discuss the factors that influence the effectiveness of UV light in sanitizing food contact surfaces. A. The color of the light is the only factor that matters. B. Factors include the intensity of the UV light, exposure time, and the distance from the surface. C. UV light is ineffective for sanitizing surfaces, so no factors influence its effectiveness. D. The effectiveness of UV light does not vary under different conditions. Answer. B. Factors include the intensity of the UV light, exposure time, and the distance from the surface. Proper application of UV light can significantly impact its ability to reduce microbial populations on surfaces. Question 99. How should a food service operation manage the disposal of waste oil and grease? A. By pouring it down the drain to dispose of with wastewater. B. Storing and disposing of it properly to prevent blockages and environmental contamination. C. Mixing it with food waste to simplify disposal. D. Reusing it indefinitely to minimize waste. Answer. B. Storing and disposing of it properly to prevent blockages and environmental contamination. Proper disposal methods help protect plumbing systems and the environment from the harmful effects of oil and grease. Question 100. What are the guidelines for the safe storage of ice in food service? A. Ice should be stored on the floor to keep it cooler. B. 
storing it in clean, dedicated containers away from potential contaminants. C, keeping it uncovered to allow for easy access. D, treating ice as a non-food item, so no specific storage guidelines are necessary. Answer, B, storing it in clean, dedicated containers away from potential contaminants. Ice is considered a food item and must be stored properly to prevent contamination.